Sharknado was a big storm, this is gonna be a big wave. These are zombies. What are we gonna do about those things? What are you gonna do about that? The zombie tsunami. Uh, it's alcohol-induced creativity. I, <laughs> it's, it's, you know what? After watching these movies, after doing a couple of these movies, the formula really wasn't so difficult to figure out. Sharks and tornadoes. I was talking with a buddy of mine, and I'm like, you know what? I had just gotten off The Apprentice, being a project manager for other companies, and I figured, I could do this, because I was all cocky. And I thought, I would do something like zombies. Zombies are very popular. Zombies in, like, tidal waves. And the idea started to spitball and came up with an idea, and then I think, I needed, I said, I need to make my package really strong. If I'm gonna pitch this to sci-fi, it's gotta be something they can't say no to. So I went to Anthony, I said, Anthony, would you work me, with me again after this? And he's like, mm. <laughs> He said, yeah. And I went Mark, to Thunder. Really, again? <laughs> I went to Thunder, who wrote the original Sharknado. I said, any interest in working with me again? He's like, yeah, it'd be great. I said, okay, great. So I worked on the story with Thunder. We worked it all together, got, got it down, and then I went in to pitch sci-fi. I said, I've got three words that are gonna change everything. And they knew I was coming in to pitch, so this is it. And they are? And I said, wait. From the writer of Sharknado, directed by Anthony C. <laughs> Ferrante of Sharknado, starring Ian Ziering from Sharknado. <gasps> and I held there. Like, with this dopey grin on my face, and all the executives are like, what's going on? Said, Zombie tidal wave. And I gave them this dorky face, all cocky. <laughs> and they started to laugh, and uh, I told them the story, and they loved it. They greenlit it the next day, which was exciting for me because it enabled me to produce the movie. And uh, we got to shoot in a warm climate, finally, because we shot <laughs> All, mostly all the Sharknados when it was so cold outside. The last two were in Romania and Bulgaria in the middle of the winter, but I wanted this movie in a warm climate. But then you picked a place that was just like, like 200 degrees <laughs> yeah. every day and zombie okay, makeup so melting. I, I overachieved my, uh, my goal a little we bit. We went to two extremes in one year. We went from the probably the coldest winter in Romania to the hottest uh, whatever it was in, uh, in yeah, Thailand. Yeah, it's about 70, 80% humidity in Thailand. <laughs> uh, but visually, it's spectacular. Oh, yeah. Spectacular. And when the tide goes out in Thailand, it's not like here in San Diego where it goes out 20, 30, 40 feet. It goes out miles. So any boat that's along the shore is left lying in the sand until the water comes back in. So that was like a, a just a icing on the cake. When we got there, we started doing all our location scouting, seeing that it already looked like a tsunami had hit this place. Well, we were like, we're like, can, can, can we shoot in there? It's like, well, it comes in and out. You only got three. We'll shoot there. Yeah. And then when we got into editing, it's like we were going, oh, let's let's reveal them on the boat originally. And then we see that we, we did this great drone shot with this bed and it was all empty. Like, we don't need visual effects. Yeah. It was, and, we used, and that established the fact that the tsunami tore through it. No visual effects, wonderful. Old school. We had a lot of visual effects, but we had a lot of practical effects. And because we shot in Thailand, and it was a tidal wave movie, it lent itself beautifully to creating these epic landscapes that looked like they were ravaged. But no, the, the basically we won't tell you why the zombies are there, but yeah, the no. zombies are sucked into the tidal wave and they're deposited on the, on the land. And so, you know, with Sharknado, Sharknado's a villain. You know, that that's the thing. Here, the tidal wave is the mechanism to make it a zombie movie. So we get them to shore, and and they're, there's something severely wrong with them, and they start infecting people very quickly. And they're unkillable. You can't kill our zombies. It's not like The Walking Dead, where you put a knife in the eye and scramble the brains, and they're dead. No, 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 no. You can cut the head off, and it will still bite you. You can chop an arm off, and the hand will still choke you out. So our zombieism, is on a systemic level. It's not just part of the body, it's the entire body. Um, when we were thinking of a zombie movie, I mean, it's, it's comfort food for so many people. It's, it's a dish that's served up so many different ways. We needed to do it in a way that changed up the spices a little bit. So we had to create something unique, something different. 
um, an improvement, if you will, on a, a, a pretty, pretty pedestrian idea. Well, th that's the thing is that there's so, been so many zombie movies, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big horror geek. And I, I be, before we even started this thing, I started. I just watched every single zombie movie. I wanted to really remember because I've seen them, but I wanted to know what worked and what didn't. And one of the things we kind of landed on uh, was a lot of the old 1980s uh, Lucio Fulci Italian zombie movies. And so I wanted to kind of kind of play around with that a little bit too, because I wanted to make it very very gory, but also. Um, what what are the the tropes and how can we subvert them? And and when you're when you're cutting together a movie or when you're you know once you're done with it you, you're you're it's kind of all in pieces and then when you see it all together you start seeing oh what we did actually worked. You can't top Sharknado. The thing is Sharknado is Sharknado. There will never be anything like Sharknado. It was a six film franchise where we started off and we finished it with the same team for the most part, and we got to do what we did and it got crazy. Zomitano Wife is its own movie. It has some of the same ingredients, but it's its own thing. So I, I think that people think, oh, are you going to be Sharknado? No, we're Zombie Tidal Wave. And what that means in some respects, if, in, if you want to do a correlation to Sharknado, the first Sharknado was very grounded for the most part in the first film. Aside from the tornado, it was kind of a movie, and then it just became kind of, you know, Looney Tunes crazy and over the top. This one is very grounded. It still has the ridiculous element to it, but it's, it's, it's in that same kind of scope. You had to establish the world, and then you could blow it up if we're fortunate enough to have sequels. <laughs> no, no, it's funny because there was an opportunity to use a chainsaw in this. And I just felt the the cross-pollination was a little too too kitschy. And I wanted to create something that is completely different. Where Sharknado was a big storm, this is gonna be a big wave. Okay, and there had to be different assets. There's different signature weapons. Um, in Sharknado, Finn had his chainsaws. He had that, he was very capable with that. Uh, our guy in this movie, his name is Hunter Shaw. Uh, he's a fisherman, former uh, firefighter, um, left society because he couldn't save everyone and uh, had a little traumatic uh, issues back way back then. So he just went off and created his own world and started to sail the seven seas, wound up in uh, Southeast Asia on some nondescript uh, Asian uh, shore where uh, you know, all of a sudden there's some seismic activity and then uh, there's these zombies that come to town and, you know, he kicks into rescue mode where he not only has to save himself, but his friends and as many people as possible. But he's got to do it in a way that is very challenging because you can't kill the zombies in any traditional way. There, there was, there was a, also there, a, in some of the earlier drafts of the script, there were like little nods, like making shark jokes, and I was just like, no, we, you know, yeah. it, it, you know, look, it's enough that you've got, you know, thunder myself and I and yeah, it, you know, we were okay. gonna have a kid wearing a, a shy survive Sharknado shirt. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, no. So, so, so I think that's the thing is like, you, you got to do your own thing. And now that, that said, I have a certain weird sense of humor, and that still prevails in all the stuff I do. And there's a little bit of that. You in think? There. Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's twisted, um, but the the other thing too that I think is interesting, you know, all these zombie movies are about something, and I think what this is is sort of about is kind of how people get disconnected from one another, and and for him in particular, he's he's disconnected himself from trying to be connected, you know, with people for more than like six months, and what he learns over the course of the movie is that he sees these people, this mother and daughter, his friend and niece, and how they will do anything for these people, no for matter, each other. for each other, for, for that situation, and that, 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 that touches him, and then he realizes that, you know, in order to survive, you, you know, you need people. It's not one man for himself, it's one man for everyone, and I think that, that was kind of like a fun little, little a nice thing art. to play with. Yeah. <laughs> as serious as it be. It's got to be grounded, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a struggle when we're creating these movies because the network wants as much action as possible, but they also want a lot of character development. And one cancels out the other. If you want a lot of action, then there's not much time for character development. But if you want a lot of development, well, then you got to slow the pace down and you got to tell the story. And you know, there's no zombies chomping on other zombies while that's going on. So finding the right balance, finding the right dialogue, um, consolidating to the point where it was concise and succinct to tell the story in the midst of all this chaos, so we could have both at the red line. Uh, throughout the entire movie. Anthony likes to say this is 
there's no pee break. There's no opportunity to take a pee because the action just keeps coming. And in between that, you know, we're dropping some story, giving some backstory, character development, but then, oh my God, the action starts up again. It's, um, it's nonstop. I, th I think the one thing too, with the Sharknado, everybody always tries to figure out what the ingredient was. I think one of the components of why we survived for six movies is, is what we're talking about, is that you cared about the characters. That it was, if the, all six movies was about family. It was about, about uh, a man trying to, to rebuild his family or save his family and, and all the dynamics. And as crazy as the movies got, there was always that heart to them. And that's what we brought to this. Yeah. I mean, the last Sharknado, one, it, it, the, there's a, it's very outrageous and crazy and all over the place, but the, the one little strand that, that it really was the most important thing to me was it was he had to make a choice. He, was gonna, he could lose his son forever or save the world. Like if he rectified everything in time, his son would never, he would cease to exist. And so he makes that sacrifice and that choice. And that's, that's pretty cool for a wacky, crazy film. You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's what we took into this. We like, how can we ground this? What are, what are the stakes? So you care about the characters, so you love these characters. And that actually was one of the, the, the most difficult parts about this movie is that who do you kill? Like we had things where we want to kill this character, but it's like, oh, well, we can't yeah, now. Yeah, we yeah. love them. We don't want to kill them. So, so yeah, so it's like that's, that's the magic of that kind of stuff is finding the, that, that core and you, you know, where you love these people. Uh, zombie kills. Yeah, zombie kills. Or no, I, I think every, anytime you see red blood, because they'll, they'll, be, they'll be plastered by the end of the movie. That'd be great. <laughs> I, mean, I think the blood flows freely in this movie. Uh, th I was uh, telling this last night at the panel, um, you know, because we we're trying to pay homage to like that 80s, uh, you know, over the top gore, we went over the top with the blood. I told Ian initially, going, I'm shooting as much blood as possible. We'll we'll pare it back, but I'm just gonna let the hose go until the very and end. And I let him go, and I let him go, and then we got into the cutting room, and I'm like this, because <laughs> it's uh, there was some stuff that it's just a little, dare I say, overkill. Uh, yeah. But 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 that said, we put more gore in the cut that we delivered to the network for waiting for standards and practices. Right. And they loved it! And, 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 they, and we were waiting, because because in, in the 80s, they would do that for the MPA. They would put more gore in, because they knew they would pair it back to where they wanted. And like we were just like, oh, let it just flirt. And then all of a sudden, oh, sorry. See? See, that's what I did. My hands, it's Italian. All right, don't make a meal out of it. Okay, Finish and your and so, so anyways. Jesus so, Christ. So we <laughs> delivered it to the network, and they come back, and they go, that's fine. So we actually had to self-censor ourselves. <laughs> yeah. To get it to where we wanted it. <laughs>